Other matters now. The Nigerian Navy says it has deployed four ships and two helicopters for exercise Grand Africa NEMO 2022. The move is aimed at tackling criminalities in Nigeria's territorial waters. The chief of the naval staff spoke at the flag of ceremony of the exercise in Lagos. Senior correspondent Abe Kano was there for TVC News. The flag of ceremony is holding on board NNS Centenary. It is the job of the safety officer to brief those on board. The ship is born with equipped sick bay and trained medical personnel. Alternatively, call 065 on the ship's intercom for medical assistance. For the chief of the naval staff represented by the Federal Officer Commanding Western Naval Command says strong coordination is needed in the fight against maritime security in the Gulf of Guinea. So the need for the joint exercise. Once again. This year's exercise is particularly instructive considering the dynamic and volatile nature of global security. Glaring for ongoing conflicts is some parts of Europe and its future implications. The Gulf of Guinea is becoming more strategic, not only due to its enormous resources, but as a major sea lane of commerce and communication. The Nigerian Navy will be deploying four ships, two helicopters, elements of the Nigerian Navy Special Boot Service, and maritime domain awareness assets for this year's exercise. That signals the flag of as Nigerian Navy joins other navies at sea. Exercise Grand African Nemo 2022 is a continuation of series of exercises that started in the year 2018. The essence is to continue to keep the Gulf of Guinea and host nation waters as safe as possible. So once we are able to continue to have this under the Yaoundé architecture, we believe that um, we will continue to see, as we have seen, Nigerian water becoming piracy free. Other nations will also have a similar trend as they continue to do this. Exercise Grand African Nemo 2022 is an initiative of the French Navy and it will last from the 12th to the 16th of October 2022. Ivy Kano, CBC News, Lagos. Let's talk a bit of climate change now. Are you aware this year's floods have been marked the worst Nigeria has ever witnessed? The Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development says it plans to adopt the recently approved National Flood Emergency Preparedness and Response Plan to mitigate the effects of flood disasters. 31 states and the FCT have been gravely impacted by the 2022 floods, affecting over 1.4 million people with about 500 deaths recorded. Muyo Thomas has more. The impact of the flood across the country is already biting hard. The Lokoja Bridge, which is the link road between the north and south, has been flooded, making commuting difficult. This has greatly affected trade as exchange of goods between the north and the south is now an Herculean task. It has also resulted in long queues in fuel stations in Abuja and beyond. While people are still groaning under this discomfort, the flood has wrought even worse disasters in some states and communities. Another flooding issue. The Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs braves journalists on the issues of the flood. He says already 790,254 people are displaced and moved out of their locations. 1,546 persons among the displays were injured. Furthermore, 44,099 houses were partially damaged. 45,249 houses totally damaged. And 76,168 hectares of farmland partially damaged while 70,566 hectares of farmland are completely destroyed by the deluge. The National Emergency Management Agency have been able to provide relief materials to support over 315,000 of the displaced persons. Worse still are the farmlands affected by the floods. 
This may result in food insecurity in the year to come. The Permanent Secretary says the economic loss cannot be ascertained as the rains are not yet over, but an assessment of loss to farmlands, poultry facilities, livestock and fisheries is ongoing. Many at this briefing wonder why Nigeria always waits for these flood disasters to happen before actions are taken. But the Permanent Secretary corrects this notion, insisting states were already pre-warned about impending floods. All the meetings have been held between Mr. President and governors, and the minister has attended meetings with the governors to tell them the specific villages and communities. I have all the exhibits of letters. He has shot that the government is making all effort to mitigate the impact, but would need public support to achieve this. Moya Thomas, TVC News, Abuja. A campaign has been launched to advocate for climate change actions to be implemented in Nigeria and other African countries. The campaign is meant to address the impact of climate change on vulnerable populations. Kemi Balogun has more details. Women and girls experience the greatest impacts of climate change, amplifying existing gender inequalities and posing unique threats to their livelihoods, health and safety. Over the years, efforts to fight climate change and assist vulnerable countries to cope with its impact have intensified. But these impacts are still being felt by everyone, particularly the vulnerable groups. As African women and girls, we strongly believe that we have issues when it comes to the issues of climate change. And therefore, uh, we have mobilized the whole of African continent and we have a charter of demands to present to the Conference of Parties, but also to the UNFCCC to say that this is what we want on the African continent. We want to happen. As the impact of climate change continues to take a toll on vulnerable continents across the world, urgent actions are needed to reverse the trend to pave way for a more sustainable development. This meeting, championed by the Women Environmental Program and Christian Aid, want to make this happen through a list of six expectations and demands ahead of the United Nations 27th Climate Change Conference. At the same time, we want to see how can women especially be at the, at the negotiating table. Because if you look at most of the, 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 the continent, especially in Africa, the national focal points that we have are just men. And we are talking about decisions, we are talking about policies. If you are not at the policy table, if you are not at the negotiating table, you will not be able to understand favorably the issues that affect the gender Concern. And so these are several issues that we are going to take to COP27. All regions of the world are affected by the negative impacts of climate change, but developing nations are mostly affected due to their low adaptive capacity. The push here is to ensure that this situation changes by raising voices at the Climate Change Summit taking place in November in Egypt. Kami Balogun, TVC News, Abuja.